Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, you know, still sticking with the conference after lunch and tuning in and, and choosing this se this session. Um, as we were just saying, you know, at the start there, questions as we go along. I mean, you know, well, okay, there's a few more people logging in. If it gets to be too much, we'll, we'll put off the questions to the end. But if, if we can have a dialogue, it's going to be better. It's going to make me feel better about presenting. So I'm not just like reading slides. And it's going to make you feel better about actually learning what you came here to learn. So, you know, let's, let's, let's do that. Let's have a conversation. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get right in. I'm going to share screen here and pull up some slides. Because, um, you know, I don't feel like I'm a professional if I don't have my slides. Here we go. So this is the session you, you signed up for. Uh, introduction to recovery cafes, peer focused healing communities. Uh, and just, you know, all set up. So, <laughs> Hopefully some of you already know, that's why you're curious and you came to the session. Some of you may have chosen the session thinking, what the heck is a recovery cafe? So basically recovery cafes are healing communities, supporting folks in recovery from the traumas of substance use disorders, homelessness, mental health challenges, incarceration, family violence, community violence, et cetera. Um, so right from the start, you know, a, a lot of folks, you know, have the conception that recovery cafes are specifically about drugs or alcohol or specifically about homelessness, but really it's about all of it. And, and the key word here is traumas, uh, or about healing from trauma. And I'm going to say that about 26 more times before our hour is up. Uh, but you know, the traumas that lead to and come from the substance use disorders, the alcoholism, the homelessness, the family violence, community violence, incarceration, homophobia, sexism, racism, met, I mean, you know, the whole gamut of trauma that, that uh, we subject ourselves to and society subjects us to. So first cafe was founded uh, nearly 20 years ago up in the Seattle area by Killian, Ruby, and Mary. Uh, Killian and Ruby still very much involved every day with the original cafe up in Seattle, as well as growing the network, which I'll explain the difference between individual cafes and the network as we go along. Um, if you if you know Seattle, the first location was in Belltown. Now the the main the main <laughs> sky cafe is uh, South Lake Union. There's also also one in uh, Soto, south of downtown. But they, you know, Killian and Ruby, Mary, they they developed this model to help people maintain recovery reduce relapse and fulfill their potential, um, maintain recovery. So first thing, Recovery Cafe is not a, a treatment program. We're not a clinical program. It's not, you know, it's, it's you know, if somebody does a 28 day program, what do they do on day 29? A 90 day program, what do they do on day 91? You know, it's about maintaining and no time limits in the long term of recovery because, you know, the attendees of this conference, you all know it's long term, it's lifelong. So reducing relapse. Um, you know, we're not gonna lie to anyone and say, oh yeah, when someone joins a recovery cafe, they're they're set for life. There's there's no going back. Reality, people relapse sometimes. But we do have the data, and it'll it'll come up in a couple of slides from now. We we do have data that for the folks who come to recovery cafes. They're relapse, they put more time between relapses. And if they relapse, they're back on their feet, back in the cafe, back to stability a lot quicker than without this type of long-term healing community for support. And then fulfill their potential. And you know, when, when uh, she was reading the my, my bio a minute ago, you saw I've got an attention span smaller than a gnat's. Um, you know, I was uh, the executive director of the cafe in in in, uh, in San Jose. I enjoyed, you know, started left that, started another one in Santa Cruz with a board member there, a founding board member. Then about a year and a half ago, started uh, joined the network team. So I, you know, my brain bounces around, my job title bounces around. But what keeps me, what's kept me looped into the Recovery Cafe family and not going off and doing something else is that this works. That uh, you know, you also heard which which read my biography. Um, you know, I've been doing community work, so nonprofit work since like about 1989. So 33, 34 years, a long time. So the eight years or so I've been involved with recovery cafes, I've seen the transformation in the people we work with so much more than the 25 years that came before that. 25 years before that, I worked in homeless shelters. I worked in food programs. I did provided a lot of good services, 
I never saw somebody's life take off and open up the way I have with working with the various recovery cafes over the last eight years or so. So that's what keeps me personally involved and changing my role from dive to dive, but keeps me involved and interested in, in, in wanting to do things like this and, and you know, spread the word to, to folks at conferences like, like you're attending now. Um, now, here's a quote. Hopefully, I think you all in this in this kind of a group probably can relate to it and agree that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. And the opposite of addiction is connection. It's from Johan Hari, and I, re I recommend all, all of his books. He's a fabulous author. Um, but yeah, you know, connection and, you know, I keep mentioning healing communities, bringing people together. Connection is where we work. It's not just about, you know, we're here, we're preaching abstinence and, and anything else is no good. We're, we're, we're about healing together the traumas. So recovery cafes, and, um, you know, I'll show you at the map in a couple of slides, but there's currently 57 across the, the country, including one in Canada. Um, so, you know, each one is its own independent local nonprofit, uh, but following the same model, which I'm going to explain. And key to that model is that it's a membership organization, but membership is free. Anybody can be a member of any of the 57 recovery cafes, but a member makes three commitments. And the first is that they uh, will be drug and alcohol free for 24 hours anytime they enter the cafe. So a low barrier, you know. Um, we don't want, if someone comes in, we don't want them currently tripping, drunk, whatever, uh, because we want them to be able to uh, give and receive information to participate in their recovery and their peers' recovery. This is the, the peer conference after all. Uh, you know, so we want them to be able to be present for themselves and for their peers, for, for others. And we don't want them you know, you know, we don't want one person uh, to, to to trigger another person's uh, relapse. So, 24 hours, it's done without shame or blame. If somebody comes in and the person at the front desk recognizes you look a little off today, it's with a "Hey, let's go talk on the front steps for a few minutes." You understand why I can't let you in today, but I really want to see you tomorrow. Or if you're not, you know, call and let us know that you're okay. We want to see you as soon as you can. But you understand why, you know, so 24 hours, no drugs or alcohol. Second member commitment is participation in their weekly recovery circle. That's our basic unit of support group. So they've got to be to be continue being a member, uh, participate in their circle uh, on a weekly basis, and then give back, give back, contribute to the cafe community. And it can be as simple as, you know, at the end of the day, somebody's got to take out the garbage, sweep, mop, whatever to as a member grows with the community and they become a peer leader taking more of a you know they contribute back by becoming a circle leader by um working in the kitchen and and you know leading meal preparation or joining the board of directors of their local cafe i mean so you know i get from sweeping to joining the board of directors giving back and and growing peer leadership is a big part of that giving back that recovery cafes, if they're done right, of the 57 of them, when they're done right, um, you know, most of the circles, most of it is driven by that pure leadership that that builds up. Um, so what is a recovery circle, right? That's the, the, so beyond that, it's the one piece of program activity that everybody must participate in. Um, what is it? It's a small peer-led group, usually eight to 10 members. So, you know, if there's in like in San Jose, uh, there's currently about 170 members of the cafe, but each circle has eight or 10 people. So that's your community within the community. So there's the people who know you deeply, you know them deeply, um, you're, you're there to to support each other. Um, and, and, you know, if like if you're the Wednesdays at three o'clock circle, that's your circle. You don't go to the Tuesdays at 11 o'clock. You go to your circle. So it's the same, you know, small group who who are your peers among peers. Um, and you're checking in on your current challenges, successes, things uh, you might want support on, things you just want to brag about, things you want to complain about. Um, and after a member shares, it's up to them whether they're, they're, they're open to feedback or um, or if they just, today I just need to rant, you know, <laughs> that's okay too. People will ask permission before offering excuse me, feedback. We're not there to fix or cure anybody. We're there to support each other as a group of peers. Um, 
Yeah, build a peer support of my members, opportunity for feedback. Now, fair, yeah, yeah, I said all that. Private, what's what's said in circle stays in circle. Um, so, I mean, unless, uh, you know, if, if you know, uh, yeah, there may be exceptions where, where, you know, if a member says something that's concerning, the circle leader may say, may I talk to staff about that and get you additional, additional assistance. But basically, circle is just for checking in, supporting each other. Uh, most recovery cafes also have what we call school for recovery. These are six to eight week classes in a variety of topics, and they can be the, the recovery centered classes like wellness recovery action plan, living with a mental health diagnosis, to healthy table kind of healthy living kind of classes, meditation, yoga, seat to table, um, job, life skills, arts, um, you know, uh, you know, basically anything that, uh, you know, your members are interested in and you've got somebody, whether it's a peer leader or a community volunteer who's able to prepare and, and teach the class, you know, there, there's a class in school for recovery. And then, you know, members who receive, uh, you know, complete classes uh, get recognition. Here you see a, a, a Recovery Cafe San Jose graduation ceremony, everyone holding their certificates for the classes they, they completed. Um, and for a lot of our members, it's like, it's like it's the first time they've ever been recognized for for anything. They've ever been, you know, received any kind of recognition for completing something. And so this it's all about again healing, but by building people's self esteem. And you, and you see that you know the by the background that it's a beautiful room that we're in that we you know pay attention to making it a, a space that will help people build their self esteem, build their leadership skills. Um, you know, it's a big part of it. Beyond Circle and School for Recovery, uh, every recovery cafe has some level of food and beverage service. So it can be as simple as peanut butter sandwiches, or if you've got a good commercial kitchen, like I get them out, most of my, most of my pictures are coming from San Jose, but uh, you know, we put out a beautiful hot meal, a healthy meal. We've got a great coffee bar, uh, you know, making espressos and lattes and and that's my friend uh tony there with her certificate of completion when she completed the barista training and she is now um now uh well she went from member taking the barista class to peer leader leading others now she's actually on staff and and leading the, the barista program so again how peer leadership grows and you know members becoming peer leaders joining the staff um so so that's what kind of every recovery, that's the basic model. Beyond that, each recovery cafe has a different menu of programs, of, of things happening based on what their community need is, based on their capacity to deliver. So, you know, peer navigators, uh, you know, peer coaching, social activities, holiday parties, open mic nights. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, this Friday is the open mic night in San Jose. Uh, Referral of resources, bringing in other nonprofit partners, you know, and, and being able to make connections for other services, guest speakers, health clinics, um, you know, sometimes 12 step meetings were not specifically 12 step, but, you know, a lot of the cafes have a room that they use for the 12 step. So, you know, a lot of other, you know, uh, the, 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 the possibilities are fairly endless. It's um, whatever is meeting the local needs for that, uh, for that area. Um, so here's some random schedules showing you, you know, mixed in with the recovery circles, self-discovery through art, Tai Chi, writing workshop, uh, you know, mindfulness. Um, so you get the idea. Um, you know, I want to pause there because I none of you're all too polite and you haven't interrupted me with questions yet. So I'm going to give you a chance of, is there anything before I move on? You're all good. Okay, I'll move on. But, but please do, you know, if there's... Hey, Ken. Sure. Yeah. I actually have a question for you. Maybe if you have, I don't think I've seen it. Um, I've been listening and watching, but uh, a list of the cities that you're in. Oh, yeah. Um, or put it know, in the I'll, chat. I'll, you can just throw it in the yeah, chat. Yeah, uh, it, it'll be on... Um, it'll be on the network website, recoverycafenetwork.org. Okay, I'll put uh, that in the chat. Yeah. yeah, there okay, there will great. be the the map and 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 it's an okay. interactive map. So when you you know you find you know you can zoom in and click on each of the of the icons and it'll tell you the the city and their website if they have it you know and whatever else. So yeah, from from recoverycafenetwork.org, you'll okay, be got you'll, it. you'll find the interactive map. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ken, um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, I'm Thomasina, and, and unfortunately, I can't get my video on. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't like not showing my face. That's okay. Uh, my question is: uh, Are there are there any organizations behind this that help start it, like NAMI or something like that? I'd be interested in that. Who's yeah, yeah. So that's you know part of my role uh, with, with with Recovery Cafe Network as a catalyst. And there's other people with my title, other people on the catalyst team. And if you're interested after the uh, after the presentation, um, you know, we'll make sure my my email gets in the chat as, as well as again from that network website, you can contact us and whoever is your local or you know uh, uh, the catalyst, whether it's myself or one of my colleagues, we can exact we can work with you on on what's necessary in putting together your team. And uh, if you haven't got a nonprofit yet, we can give some coaching on on getting your nonprofit started and go through that whole process with you. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not interested from that viewpoint. I'm interested okay. from the viewpoint of an organizational analyst. I mean, who, who did this start as just a totally independent organization or is it? Yes, ab absolutely. It started from the recovery cafe, the original one in Seattle, uh, and then started to grow. And, and actually I'll, there's a slide in a couple of seconds, which will further explain and get to, get to that answer. So, okay, thank yeah, you. We'll, we'll get to that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so moving on, um, multiple uh, pathways. You know, like like I said, I mentioned we're not specifically twelve step, but honor twelve step, smart recovery, Dharma recovery, uh, et cetera, um, faith based traditions, therapeutic, medically assisted treatment, whatever brings you to that first step of stability, whether it's, you know, specifically sobriety and, in, in, you know, drugs, alcohol or, or whatever else, whatever brings you that first step of stability. Again, we're there for long-term, long-range support following that multiple pathways. Um, and in and, and viewing the cafe as part of a recovery-oriented system of care. So, uh, you know, I mentioned bringing in nonprofit partners as part of the program and, and being a resource and referral. Uh, we can't do everything for everybody. But we build partnerships with the other folks in our communities who can help with treatment or housing or education, uh, uh, health. Um, the list goes on. I mean, this is a simplified drawing, but really, it's a you know, it's a multi-spoke wheel with lines going in all directions. Uh, justice involvement is not in this simple diagram, but it's a big part of um, you know we we have. Uh, in, again, I'm using San Jose as my primary model, but, but you know, each of the cafes across the country is similar. Uh, you know, we have um, partnerships with the with the drug court judges drug, who refer folks from their court to the cafe. We also, from the cafe, we can refer folks to the um, expungement program to help people get their records cleared. We have, you know, partnerships with the the, the reentry center. So, you know partnerships in and out all across the way as a system of care um, and, and, and to make them, you know, what we cannot do everything for our members, but we can like do everything we can to, to introduce them to somebody who can help them with other issues, build those relationships. Um, so, you know, when we talk about recovery cafe and the model, when we when we are in the recovery cafe, we talk a lot about we use terms loving accountability. We we use a lot of heart language, a lot of loving language. Um, but this slide is to remind us that even though we use a lot of that quote soft language, that there's actual research and science behind why the model works and fits in with a lot of the guidelines uh, from SAMHSA, the Federal uh, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, fits in with a lot of other research, motivational enhancement, um, community reinforcement, trauma-informed approach, um, you know, and there's, I mean, this is just like a sampling of the, um, the research that backs up how and why what we do actually has the desired effects of helping people not just in again it's not just about staying sober it's it, it, i mean that's like the least of it it's about healing and growing and blossoming as a human being and people who thought they people who who i mean I, well actually she's coming up in another slide but but my friend diana who who was 
basically a hermit when she first was dragged to the recovery cafe by one of her few friends who became a peer leader who is now on the board of directors of recovery cafe in san jose and i mean the, that kind of growth there's there's science behind it and why it works and, and, and we have the data yeah we um each cafe does a similar uh survey of their members each year and then again you know and, and it's compiled into network-wide data you see for those who uh you know, identify alcohol as their primary recovery challenge. 88% report doing better for those who reported drug use as their number one challenge, 91%. Um, and again, that goes on. This is just some random sample sample data. But, you know, we can back up that <laughs> it works. Okay, and here, yeah, some of my friends. So I was just, I was just already talking about uh, Diana and, 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 and her story, um, you know, Alan, uh, you know, and I, I, another, you he, can he, read this, you know, he's lived on the streets for 30 plus years um, and was after being arrested after coming out of jail. It was actually, frankly, it was our partnership with the Reentry Center, which brought, brought Alan in and, um, you know, and he's now a peer leader. He's lead, leads a recovery circle. Um, he's the drummer in our house band. Uh, and I, I mentioned yeah, we got the the open mic coming up on Friday. Alan will be uh, behind the drum kit for uh, a big part of that for some of the performers. Um, Tony, I mentioned Tony earlier, uh, who who um, is now on staff, but it, uh, actually at the time of this, she 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 had just you see in the middle of her poster there it says that she is the head barista as of last week. That's when she was still a peer leader and and, and member. Um, now she's on staff, but I mean when when she when she made it to 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 lead barista and and was teaching other people that she was still um living she was still living under a bridge and and now she's finally housed and and, and employed and um again the growth in members over the years uh rosanna uh you know again another story and uh you'll you i think i think from from the conference website, you'll be able to download my slides later, and you can read all of their these stories when you get to these slides and get get some more. But um, you know, I just wanted to share a, a sampling of of um, yeah some of some of our peer leaders in, in in San Jose who who came to Recovery Cafe um, feeling at their lowest and then becoming leaders through uh, the healing that, that goes on there. Um, and, 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 and these watercolor, uh, uh, biographies are done by, by a local volunteer and artist who she came and she wanted to just, she was doing the project on, on homelessness in general. And she went to a few nonprofits and wanted to do just a handful of these, uh, watercolor portrait biographies. And she so fell in love with Recovery Cafe and, and our members here that she's now done about 50 or 60 of, of these watercolor biographies, uh, for our folks. Um. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause again for a moment because that that's the recovery cafe model. Now I'm gonna kind of get into the network and answer that question of, yeah, who's behind the growth and, and all that. So it was it before I do, any other questions right now? Okay, I'll move on. But you know, again, you know, we have we we have an hour and a quarter I think all together together and you know and I think the slides if I just read them through straight will only take 40 minutes so you know. it's an hour it's an hour but we can go oh, it's an hour. okay we well, good to. yeah our okay. ne the next session is at two so okay. we try to keep it within an hour if we can Very but good. if you go Very over good. that's okay too okay well then we're, then we're, we're good we're right on track so uh the network so okay I, I, I want to start, I explained the, the first recovery cafe in Seattle opened in 2004. In 2014, so 10 years later, um, we in San Jose, as well as the group in uh, Everett, Washington, each started up uh, using recovery cafe model. And we, it was a very informal agreement. It was just each of us independently contacted the Killian and Ruby in, in Seattle and said, we really love what you're doing. Um, we want to do it too. And, and, you know, and just on a very personal basis on a, yeah, we like you, you like us, blah, blah, blah. You know, we, we hugged and said that that's it. We were, you know, that was the agreement we had. We had no contract, we had a hug. Um, but then by 2016, two years later, there were now five of us 
uh, other recovery cafes across the country, uh, you know, with informal agreements. Uh, and that's when, you know, the, the lawyers in Seattle said, slow down, we got to put some, uh, you know, some some formality around this. And I see Kevin has raised his hand. Yeah, Kevin, what's up? Yeah, uh, I guess um, one of the things I'm trying to understand is um, uh, the difference between like a Starbucks. Um, you have coffee, you serve coffee or, or drinks, um, but um, people exhibit a range of experiences and behaviors in cafes. And you mentioned about loving um, accountability. Um, you know, I work with people who uh, talk to themselves a lot, maybe loudly, maybe not loudly, you know, maybe uh, maybe don't smell too well, you know, what, what are the, what are the kind of things that are, is it the same as a Starbucks or is it something a little bit different, I guess, you know? No, I mean, I mean, Starbucks is going to sell you a very expensive coffee and there's no support there. I mean, maybe you meet your friends and that's cool, but, but there's no program at Starbucks. Starbucks is just going to take your money and give you, you know, good coffee. I drink Starbucks sometimes, but you know, uh, yeah. And, and, and Starbucks, you know, if you, don't look right or don't smell right or are scaring people because you're, you know, if there's somebody who's got some schizoactive uh, stuff going on and the barista at Starbucks is not used to that, does not understand that, and it might scare another patron and you'll be asked to leave. At Recovery Cafe, we understand that very well. And somebody will sit with you and ask, you know, and, and you know, you <laughs> support you and say it's and it, it's going to be all right you know you're not going to no one's going to ask you to leave because of your mental health condition and no one's going to ask you for a penny for that cup of coffee because if you're a member as long as you're a member first remember that means if you're a member that means you've committed to 24 hours no drugs or alcohol when you come in you're participating in your weekly recovery circle and once in a while you you raise your hand to volunteer to sweep or take out the garbage or again as you build your peer leadership do you know contribute in another way um you know and then all the coffee and food as much as you want no one's going to ask you for a dime um so that's the beauty of a membership model in the nonprofit world is uh it ain't starbucks it ain't two bucks for a basic small coffee and and six bucks if you want a medium with uh any uh anything else in it um yeah i mean good 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 questions because people hear recovery cafe and they think it's you know it's a cafe that's open to the it's not open to the public you know it's the most exclusive cafe in town because you have to be a member to get all the coffee and the snacks and the lunch and the dinner and whatever else yeah so thank well, yeah, you yeah, that's something I didn't mention I guess I I kind of assumed it was open to the public that's one thing I kind of didn't understand yeah yeah it's it's just 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 for the members just for the folks in recovery who are coming in for their for their circle for classes for for healing community yeah. So, you know, so Ken, Ken, uh, I noticed in the chat there was a question from oh, okay. from yeah, Ryan from Ryan Rabuno from NAMI who says, "I take it you don't have to have a dual diagnosis to be a part of this." You, no, no, you don't. You do, do need to or don't need dual. Diagnosis. Do not. That says, "I take do it not. you don't have to." Is the question? No, no, you don't. You don't need. I mean, it's like I say, it's recovery from any anything and everything. So, um, yeah, recovery. It's recovery broad based. So whether it's drugs and alcohol, homelessness, mental health issues, um, incarceration, violence, what, what, whatever it may be, um, you know, we, any, and any combination thereof. Yes, there's frequently there's, you know, people are crossing, they're, they're healing from, from 6,000 things. Um, All right, that's fair then, enough. Yeah. And, and, and there was a, another question from Kevin that was, mm -hmm. what is out of bounds, mad behavior, talking to voices, wandering around, touching random items? Yeah, I'm just thinking off of the questions. Yeah, here. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's something what we, we were just talking about is, is, is yeah, I mean, you know, in, in the cafe, there's going to be people who understand that and, and know, and, and yeah. yeah um, so, so hopefully, you know, once so many times I remember, we get to know people we know what is their normal uh, behavior, even if it has to do with mental health, versus somebody who um, is exhibiting that behavior because they are they're using. Um, you know, we we get we know our members well enough. People in each cafe know their members well enough that um, you know someone who's using maybe has to leave, but but somebody who 
yeah, but lots of people have have voices, have things going on, and they are welcome. They are quite welcome. Yeah, yeah. And and maybe I, I've been listening and watching, but I want to make sure I understand what the peer piece fits into mm -hmm. this. Are you looking for peer specialists to assist and get training through you, or like what 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 role can yeah. somebody, maybe some of these people tap in to support the recovery network? Sure. So. Let's see, yeah, each cafe is as much as possibly a peer peer run. Uh, most people starting recovery cafes are are starting it because of their history with whether it's again you know the, the homelessness, drugs, alcohol, mental health, etc. Uh, we all pretty much are in recovery. I mean, as, as part of what keeps me in, as I said, you know, changing roles, uh, but still involved is is how much. It has helped me in my personal challenges and demons over the years. Um, you know, I mean, I was one, I didn't really get into that in the introduction, but I was one who, um, yeah, okay, so in my teens, uh, a, a lot of the hallucinogenics, the you know, LSD and mushrooms, and then my 20s, it was uh, a lot of cocaine. Um, and when I stopped each of those, I stopped them pretty much cold turkey and, and I do so I didn't consider at the time anything about addiction because I knew people who who were addicts who couldn't just say okay I've, I've had enough of that and walk away I knew my story was slightly different and that it wasn't necessarily addiction I was dealing with it was self-medication for other issues I was self-medicating for social anxiety and depression and other you know other of my long <laughs> list of, of problems. Um, so while I have extensive drug use history, it was not necessarily as an addict, it was, but it was tangential to that. And it was um, self-medication for other primarily mental health and behavioral issues. Um, so that's my recovery and healing journey and things which um, I kept buried and didn't deal with for a long time. But being part of recovery cafes, coming in as staff, but then quickly realizing I'm as I'm a member too. I'm 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 here for my own recovery, uh, my own support, as much as any of the folks who are coming here for services. You know, um, and I think pretty much everybody. So, so if your question, you know, what what what, I, what would I hope to inspire folks who are listening to this session, uh, depending on what they're current situation is what they're you know what, what they're looking for in their lives where they're located if it's near a recovery cafe or not if there's a recovery cafe near them where they are now motivated to as a peer leader volunteer get involved help help you know grow the program that's fantastic if they're located in an area where there's currently no recovery cafe maybe they'll be motivated to put together a team of peers to get one started and they'll Call you know we'll work together to get, get one started if they're in an area where there isn't one. Um, so I mean that's kind of you know yeah there, there's opportunities for either joining up with an existing recovery cafe community or helping get one started if you're somewhere where you know one of the holes in our map. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, great, um, awesome. Yeah, thank so you. so. And yeah, this kind of the next section kind of gets gets into that is is growing the network. So, um, the, I'm sorry, was that another question? Okay. Um, so the network form you know formally started in 2016 after there were already uh, five additional recovery cafes beyond Seattle, um, and so now I'll get the map of 57. Um, but each cafe is its own local independent nonprofit, um, and that's very important. Is that the network, myself and, and the other people in the network team, we can you, mentor, we can coach, we can train, uh, we can help people a lot with it. But really, each cafe has, is going to be a grassroots from the community up kind of an organization. And here's, I keep referencing the map. Oh. This is the, the current map. And you see there's areas where we have like big clumps. And then there's areas where there's it's a, a barren wasteland with no recovery cafes. And I don't know where you're all dialing in from, but if you're, again, if you are dialing in from someplace where you see a lot of existing cafes and you're motivated to join the team, you know, help out, fantastic. 
if you're someplace where, you know, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, or whatever, you know, where there's, where it's sparse and empty, maybe you'll be motivated to, to get something started. Um, and this is the map I said is, that's on the website. So if you go to the website, recoverycafenetwork.org, um, you can click on each of these balloons and it'll give you the details of, of uh, what city they represent and if there's a web link or, or other contact information. Hey, can uh, Kevin ask also, because and I was wondering the same thing, if there are paid or unpaid positions when, they, when you do peer work with the recovery network? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The answer is yes. Um, um, recovery cafes, each being a, a you know, small local nonprofits, um, you know, a, a lot of volunteer positions and a lot of the peer leadership positions will be volunteer positions, but also based on what grants the recovery that, that cafe has, what their budget is, there's a lot of paid, you know, certain number of paid positions as well. So the answer is. Yeah. Is it paid or or volunteer? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends. How is it funded? How how is who funds it? Yeah. Um. Actually, I get to that in one minute. That's coming oh, right. Oh, okay. Up. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. That that that's that's good. It means I anticipated your questions. That <laughs> that there's already a slide coming up with that. Um. Okay, so I mentioned that individual members of the cafes have three core com of, have three commitments. So each cafe has six commitments to the network. So the first member commitment is to be 24 hours drugs and alcohol, drug and alcohol free. So each cafe commits to creating a community space that's drug and alcohol free, embracing and healing. We uh, the member re your requirement is to attend your recovery circle. So each cafe commits to creating structures of loving accountability called recovery circles, and we coach them in how to do that. Uh, the third membership re requirement is, is to give back. So you've got to empower members to be contributors. Um, it means it's not, you know, you're not their mommy or daddy. You're not yelling at them to do their chores. You're inviting them to take ownership of the community and, and contribute in some way. It's empowering them to contribute, not, not forcing them to do their chores. And it's, that's the, mindset and related to that the fourth core commitment raising up member leaders um you know if 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 and if a recovery cafe has been open a while and and all of the all of the leadership positions all of the you know, those circle facilitators and class leader, if everything's being done by a professional you know somebody who's a, on paid staff they're doing it wrong because it should be coming up from the membership it should be raising up members as peer leaders that's you know that's all about uh fifth core commitment ensuring responsible stewardship that and that means just being a good nonprofit, um being responsive to the irs to your donors etc and the sixth core commitment of all cafes and the network is to working to end systemic racism socioeconomic inequality um and and i mean that's the abbreviated title for the slide but i mean Beyond that, it's, it includes sexism, homophobia, et, et cetera, all the, all the isms that our society uh, suffers from. And we recognize that, you know, I, I said I was going to talk about healing from trauma 26 times. Well, I think I'm up to 21. Uh, a lot of the trauma our members um, have dealt with in society, in prison, in other, in, on the streets, comes from the racism, the the inequality, the, the et cetera, all of the all of the isms. So we have to recognize that and work to end that. Uh, so the network, as I mentioned, we what we can provide, you know, each cafe is its own local nonprofit, but we provide the model and a lot of coaching in the model, cohort learning and training. We we bring on new cafes twice a year in the spring and in the fall so that we can do group training with 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 multiple uh, cafes at once. Um, we provide they are manuals, online content library, new new cafes don't have to reinvent the wheel, whether it's um, you know, a budget template or or a daily operations manual or or a, a sample grant proposal. It's all available to them to use, to adapt. Um, you know, uh the affiliation being, you know, the, the, which leads to the funder confidence. Um as recovery cafe network and in general gets has built a reputation over 20 years new cafes kind of get take advantage take advantage of that reputation that they're associated with 
um, this group that for 20 years has been providing services and growing across the country. And then um, the program database, we all use the same uh, software to track our members that makes it easy to uh, report to Seattle so that when we get that aggregate da data, uh, makes it real easy. Uh, um, let's see, and the funding. I think someone just asked this a moment ago. So each cafe, um, you know, as its own independent local nonprofit does have to do its own fundraising. Um, and it's usually a mix of, you know, individuals, local companies, corporate grants, foundation grants, government kind of depends on where you are. Um, Indiana and Washington state, are fabulous with huge grants for new cafes. California, not so much. <laughs> Sorry to say. Um, so, and same thing with each go city to city, county to county. Some really get it and are willing to front a lot of cash needed, and some are a little more reluctant. So, uh, but what we as the network can do is. You know, we we do the trainings. So we have training called the funding fundraising triads, but we also again coaching, mentoring, uh, providing samples so we can help. But each cafe has to kind of do its own heavy lifting in terms of getting it done. Um, what I, the other thing I can say, uh, and and it's not written here because it's not a, it's not a guarantee. Okay, I can never guarantee future funding, but so far the network has been able to um, uh, have have. Uh, startup grants available to new cafes. So we have, uh, in, in, in a lot of instances, been able to, to be at least partially fund new cafes for the first two years uh, with a capacity building grant. Can't guarantee how much that'll be or how, you know, but so far we've been able to, to, to do that. Um, so bring a cafe to your community. Uh, you do webinars, uh, you know, which pretty much the same presentation as this, but slightly different. Uh, the Catalyst team, that's myself and my colleagues, were available to help you, you know, figure out if this is for you, get started, new cohorts twice a year. Uh, okay, so I'm going to leave this up for a second. So that's my email address, ken at recoverycafenetwork.org, uh, the website, recoverycafenetwork.org. Um, so you can all copy that down. Uh, and th this is the, the opening in San. That, that's the, the the entryway, the lobby in in, in San Jose. So it's a beautiful place we built there. Okay, so hopefully you've copied that down. I'm going to stop sharing so I can see all of your faces, and then I can open up the chat and see. Let's see, paid versus unpaid rule, beautiful graphics. Oh, thank you. Yeah, recoverycafenetwork.org has the map. Excellent. What is out of bounds? Okay, I think we talked about that. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, does anybody have any uh, burning questions for Ken about uh, what it's like doing what he does or what what else, what you can do with him or what he can do with you or help you? Has anyone been to a, a recovery cafe? If you have, it'd be interesting to hear your experience. Crickets. Crickets. Well, I mean, hopefully that means I was so very thorough that there's things and not, and not because, uh, you know, I bored them all to sleep. Not at all. No, it was a very admirable. It's it's very admirable, and it's amazing that it's been around for has as long as it has. I wasn't aware, and all the services that offer the community. What a great, great thing! Really excellent. Yeah, and I say, I mean, the reason I do this, you know, why I, you know, <laughs> sign up to present at conferences and 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 do all this is is because. Um, I believe in it because I've seen the transformation of people. Oh, comes out and use the cafes as a place to sit, a place to stay. Um, yes, some, okay, so I mentioned, you know, the basic, you know, what is a recovery cafe is recovery circles, uh, meals, and, in, in, you know, the healing milieu, the, you know, but, but that each cafe to meet local needs can add on to, you know, to do whatever. Some cafes are, um, Attached, you know, the, the broader organization that runs the cafe does also have housing, uh, or at some are like Lowell Mass is, is part of a treatment program. They've been doing a, they were doing a treatment program for like 30 years in Lowell. And then they opened, uh, Tanya Batista just logged in. Oh my God, I know you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi. And they opened, I was like, Lowell Mass, you know, had a treatment program for 20 or 30 years. Then they opened, uh, a recovery cafe just a few years ago as an adjunct for like the graduates of their treatment program. 
and it's worked very well. So, yeah. How does your neighborhood react to you? <laughs> uh, not always well, especially in the first few years, because mm -hmm. people are terrified of, oh, my gosh, you're going to bring in those people. But once neighbors get to realize that, you know, the people who are coming into Recovery Cafe are looking for recovery. They want stability. They want sanity. Uh, they want to get the, the, the you know, the, the, they're, the, you know, there it's appreciate ends up being appreciated some of the neighbors who you thought were going to be who started out as your worst enemies uh, end up as donors <laughs> i mean so but i see i said oh my gosh i see tanya has logged in so tanya works at recovery cafe in san jose oh how long have you been there lurking there without your camera off sorry well i've been here well i was going to go to a different one and then i seen you were presenting i'm like oh i'm going to go to ken's <laughs> Um, oh, look at your, is that the cafe in your background? I'm eating my lunch from Recovery Cafe on my lunch break. That's <laughs> work. Oh, oh, so it's. <laughs> yeah, so I've been with Recovery Cafe for seven years, going on my eighth year here at the San Jose location. And uh, every day I'm grateful to be here because it's always a new experience, whether it's a challenging one or um, just progress and um, members changing their lives one day at a time. So Maybe you could describe a, a day in the life. What's a day in the, your day? What's your day like when you come in in the morning? I know every day is different. You can't write this stuff, but. Yeah, right. Every day is different. Depends on what day, who's here. Um, the past two days we've been short staffed. So I've been, normally I'm in my office working, um, but Monday and Tuesday, I've been between the coffee bar, between the front desk or being on the floor. And so we run orientation. So. Um, it's just a lot of database, like Ken was talking about, the new database that we collect all of our stuff, so I do a lot of that. I also do the peer mentoring program, so I'm the supervisor. I do, I meet with them on a weekly basis. We provide ongoing training. Some of our peer connectors are actually on the trainings as well today through SHARE. Um, and there's a lot of things that just kind of go and happen, you know, like, oh, there's a spill on the floor. That needs to be mopped. Uh, the coffee bar needs to be stocked. Somebody needs a cup of ice. There's a lot of these little things that come up or, um, you know, somebody's in severe crisis, like, um, you know, their voices are really overpowering today and they need to just sit and chat with somebody or meditate with somebody. Um, so it's a lot of different kind of things that pop up um, unexpectedly. But um, yeah, definitely grateful to be here for the time that I've been here and continue to be here. Yeah. Awesome. Now yeah. we can get I see in the chat into Kevin the life, asked the about community yeah. outreach when you when you open or you plan to open. Yeah, definitely important to uh have a plan for that when you're when you're opening. And, and in fact, we in the application process, we ask about that, about have you done a community, have you talked to your community, have you talked to your neighbors? Have you yeah, so that's we do kind of push you to think about that before you open. Absolutely. Good question. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, I, I'm going to put in the uh, chat uh, some information. Share does have peer training, as you many of you already know, because you're here. So somehow we're preaching to the converted a little bit here, or people who are interested in the field. It's really rewarding, as you could even hear from. I think her name was Thomasina. Was that her name? Um, and from you and, and the other people, we have other sessions, of course, coming up. And I'm going to post the program in a little bit. I'm putting into the chat. Um, that we have a training program for Medi-Cal for peer specialists with SHARE. You can always just go to sharesofhelp.org. Uh, um, this, this has been recorded and uh, we'll be posting that later on our conferences page. Um, I, I had um, one, one minor thing oh, to please. ask about. Um, <laughs> the education, as we call them, um, people with traumatic brain injuries and people with histories of violence. <laughs> I guess, yep. how is that? Is that a thing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've had, yeah, definitely, and Tanya could probably talk about it as well, of members with traumatic brain injury. And and I mean, you know, and absolutely. I, I, it's one other part, one thing I just remembered, I'll forget otherwise, about, uh, yeah, and, and you just shared about the, the peer training. I, what I didn't mention was what are the qualifications for a peer recovery cafes? And that's because working across the country, some states and some localities have different requirements and so each recovery cafe follows whatever is the best guideline for their region. Um, so that's why I didn't bring up what is what officially makes somebody appear to recovery cafes. So it's follow your local guidelines. But now, yeah, yeah. Um, 
time do you do the one to say something about traumatic brain injury <laughs> in members or is that, is that or is that too traumatic <laughs> <laughs> that's triggering no um yeah i mean we've got it's kind of like a I don't know the best way to describe it, but we've got people from all different types and all different walks of life. Some people that come in with, you know, brain injury that are still struggling, that it just happened, you know, today, maybe they came in and they just, you know, uh, got triggered or had an accident where it was now, that's the consequence of it. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a pot of soup and it's like all these ingredients put in together. So we've got all types of folks with either our past trauma and, and we all say that we're all in recovery from something so that doesn't mean just the clients we call them members but uh clients that we serve but that includes our volunteers and our staff and we're all working through something this thing that we call life where huh. um here and there and so sometimes for ourselves even as staff i can say for myself i struggle with anxiety and um there's definitely been times where i've been triggered and i'm like i have i have to leave for today i just can't i just can't function uh, properly. And so um, that loving accountability piece as well. Um, so yeah, it's just, it, that's what keeps it interesting for me is that we have all different types of people, all different stages of life. Um, people that have one day clean and sober, people that have 10, 30 years clean and sober. So I think that's the beautiful thing in Recovery Cafe. It's that we're all unique in our own way, but we're all able to be in community together and be supportive of one another. I see Kevin asked uh, in this chat about the slides. I, I did send them to the conference organizers, and I believe they will end up on the website uh, available to anyone to download, probably along with the recording of the session. So um, that's I, correct. That's yeah, correct. Okay. It'll be it'll be it'll take us a little bit to get it uploaded. It'll be sometime next week, but the, the presentations and everything will be on our conference's website. So check back and um, and we'll let you know. When you need it but you can also ken has shared his information if you really needed it sooner i'm sure you could get it from him absolutely and i'll put my i can figure yeah, out put it in the slide. chat or put the slide up one or the other although your your face is lovely that would be okay too <laughs> yes yeah, so again at recoverycafenetwork.org and if, if you want to contact me and then of course the website is just recoverycafenetwork.org and you can, again, from there, in the interactive map, you can click to find your local cafe if you want to just uh, connect and volunteer and, or or be a member or you know, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Well, um, I think that's about it. It's 125. Our, our next session is in this room. I'm going to be posting in a minute the next couple of sessions, you know, the session grid so you can look at it. You can go to sharesofhope.org slash conferences if you don't have it already. But the next one is going to be pronouns for pronouns for peers with Lawrence Harmon, who is a share person. Uh, Z here, she or her, uh, Lawrence Harmon. And uh, Lawrence is a peer specialist at Share Downtown LA, and he has decades of experience in recovery. And so he wants to talk about serial trauma and severe mental illness and substance abuse. And that will be in this room at two o'clock. Um, Ken, thank you so very much. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and we we also are a nonprofit, and you can go, do, donate to share to share the love of how much you appreciate all we're doing, and I'm sure vice versa. Recovery Cafe would wouldn't hurt them either. <laughs> I hope to see you in one of them possibly, or at, at the next meeting. And Ken, thank you so much for your time. Um, everyone, have a wonderful afternoon, and maybe I'll see you in another in another session. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and thank you for helping. Thank out. you. Thank you. Thank you.